Hi, uh, my name is Jonathan Halcrow, and uh, welcome back to part two of our workshop, Graph Mining and Learning at Scale. Uh, in this section, uh, we'll be telling you all about uh, a few uh, different algorithms for uh, building graphs, uh, then doing similarity ranking on graphs, uh, clustering them, uh, doing community detection, and finally, label propagation. Uh, for my part, I'll be telling you about uh, Grail, a system we built for learning graphs, uh, both for sort of learning similarity as well as for uh, actually building the graphs themselves. Uh, this is based on a, a paper that we gave at KDD earlier this year, Grail Designing Networks for Graph Learning, if you want to read more uh, details about it. So I'll start with kind of a cartoon example of a, a system where you're, you're trying to do some learning with a graph. So in the system, you're, you're given some partially labeled set of nodes and a graph indicating some sort of similarity relationship on those nodes. Uh, and then uh, what you might do is some kind of a, a label propagation algorithm where we sort of spread the information that we have from the labeled nodes to the unlabeled nodes. And so you can see we make uh, some inference that we use the orange nodes to infer the these labels down here that these two nodes are orange and we infer that this node is black based on their neighborhoods. So in the real world, uh, unfortunately, things are rarely this cut and dried. And instead of having one sort of nice similarity relationship like we had in that toy problem, instead we normally have a bunch of different types of relationships. So you know, we have this like dash or this uh, solid line type of relationship, we have these dash lines, um, and so the first step that we normally have is figuring out, you know, how do we actually build a graph out of all these different types of relationships? Um, and this, the, the choice we make here is actually very critical. Um, if we were to make a bad choice and choose these dash dotted lines, uh, we would in fact make exactly the wrong predictions for all of these nodes. On the other hand, we could choose uh, this set of relationships and you know, maybe we have uh, some good precision making these two inferences, but uh, we, we miss edges for these two nodes and we're unable to make any kind of decision about those. So uh, we, we formalize this problem as what we call the graph design problem. Uh, so we're assuming that we're given uh, some multimodal feature space X. Uh, so you have a bunch of different types of relationships between nodes, so you might have um, you know, some co click information, you might have some like content based similarity, you might have some other like metadata type similarity, you know, depending on the particular problem. Um, and each one of these uh, modes will assume has some sort of like natural distance measure. Um, so, you, you know, you might have some sort of tags and you the natural distance measure might be like a jacquard similarity uh, on those tags. Um, we also assume that we have some partial labeling on the feature space. Um, and then we have some particular learning algorithm in mind uh, that we want to use this graph for. Um, uh, and so uh, the problem is, uh, how do we select the right graph for this particular setting? Uh, so as kind of illustrated again on the right hand side where we have a bunch of observed relationships. Um, and the ideal relationship looks like uh, this one on the right, where we're, we're just connecting sort of the green nodes with each other and the red nodes with each other. Uh, any type of learning algorithm you do from that point on would you know, basically be guaranteed to give you the right answer. Um, in our paper, we focus on designing graphs uh, for a particular type of label propagation where we're only just doing one hop. Um, and we're assuming that the, the nodes uh, in the graph have a bunch of different features associated with them, uh, as I mentioned before. And what we want to do is learn some sort of edge weighting function that's a function of all of these natural distance measures. Um, we can show in the paper that uh, minimizing log loss for this particular label propagation setup is equivalent to actually just uh, minimizing log loss for the binary prediction of whether or not two nodes belong to the same class. Uh, another way of saying it is, we're, we're weighting our edges based on the decision, decisions of a classifier that's deciding whether or not two nodes uh, are the same or different. Uh, so Grail is a sort of a scalable solution to this problem. Um, and it, it basically consists of two parts. Uh, in the first part, we take all of our candidate points and we bucket them using locality sensitive hashing. 
Uh, I'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, and then uh, within each of these buckets, uh, then we're free to do kind of an all pairs comparison because this takes what may be a very large data set and brings it down into more manageable chunks. Um, within each one of these buckets, uh, we either in sort of the model training phase, uh, we can generate some training data uh, or in the graph building phase, uh, we can apply the model we've learned uh, to infer similarity on the pairs. Uh, so locality sensitive hashing um, is is basically the, the the main trick that we have for um, uh, making this uh, doing a, a, a nearest neighbor search on a very large space and making it tractable. Um, put simply, a, a, a locality sensitive hash function is basically just a hash function with the property that points which are close to each other are likely to hash to the same value, while as points which are far from each other are unlikely to. Uh, so uh, you might imagine uh, this picture on the right-hand side giving you a, a particular realization of, a, of an LSH function uh, on this space here. Uh, so the, the LSH function works by uh, projecting all of our points onto this line and then uh, slicing this line into segments and then uh, identifying each uh, node with the segment ID that it, it falls in. So these two points uh, fall into this line segment, so they get H1. Uh, these fall into this line segment, so they get H3. Uh, and so you can see this kind of nicely uh, puts nodes together that are sort of uh, close to each other uh, without uh, uh, combining nodes that are too far from each other. Um, however, in the case of Grail, um, close and far are really, you know, uh, a function of what the model is learning. Uh, we don't necessarily know a priori exactly what close and far is until after we've trained the model. Uh, so what are we to do? Um, with Grail, uh, we find that actually uh, LSH functions on these sort of simpler per feature distances that we mentioned earlier uh, can actually serve as LSH functions for the model, uh, assuming some like basic uh, properties of the model being relatively uh, nice. Um, uh, another way to think about it is, you know, if their if their points are sort of close uh, in our basic feature spaces, uh, they're you know likely to have sort of similar predictions from the model. Um, if you want to read more about locality sensitive hashing, because this is a, a very big field, um, I provide a list of papers here. Um, I recommend uh, checking these out if you want to kind of learn more details about different LSH functions for different types of spaces uh, and sort of the history of the field. So that covers sort of the candidate generation part of the uh, of Grail. Uh, the next part is uh, what does our model look like? Um, the specific choice, uh, you know, you could really choose any type of model there. Um, in practice, uh, we use one of two different models. Uh, one is this uh, neural network uh, that I have on the slide. Uh, sometimes we also use uh, tree-based models. Um, so in this neural network, uh, it's basically a function of three things. Uh, one are sort of these candidate or these uh, these uh, primitive distances uh, that we have, uh, and optionally we can also attach sort of the the raw features of the nodes themselves uh, and learn some embedding on them. Um, then uh, we sort of combine uh, these embeddings with these like basic distances uh, and use that to make some prediction on the um, uh, of the of the pairwise similarity. Um, in the paper, we also do some comparison against some uh, other baselines for other sort of similar techniques for learning metrics. Uh, we test on two small data sets. Uh, one is uh, a set of handwritten digits from the US Postal Service. Uh, and the other is uh, the MNIST uh, handwritten digits set, which is uh, you know also very popular. Um, you can see that Grail is like generally pretty competitive with all of these. Um, on MNIST, we're able to do significantly better, in part thanks to the fact that we're using these embedding towers. Um, uh, but the, the point of this is not necessarily to show that we're doing like uh, we're you know, completely outperforming on these small data sets. Um, the the thing that's more important here is that uh, Grail uh, performs well on large data sets. Um, 
so to uh, to talk about that, um, I'll talk a little bit more about a um, a particular place we've deployed Grail uh, within at Google, uh, which is for YouTube, uh, where it's yeah used to detect uh, malicious actors. In this particular setting, uh, we've trained a Grail model to uh, uh, differentiate differentiate pairs of abusive items, where uh, from pairs where one item is abusive and one item is non-abusive. Uh, so basically that lets us uh, find a graph that sort of neatly separates the abuse from the non-abuse. Um, uh, uh, first test we do is uh, just to demonstrate the efficiency of the LSH function that we've uh, tuned for this particular problem. Uh, we look at uh, what percentage of the pairs come out of LSH uh, are what we call strong ties, which are ones which meet some uh, criteria for being high precision uh, matches. Uh, and then we also look at uh, what we call weak ties, which are ones where they're uh, below uh, some threshold that we consider to be like a, a moderate precision threshold. And so you can see for doing random pairs, uh, you know, way less than 1% of the time, if you're selecting random pairs, you, you get what we call a, a strong tie. And uh, over three quarters of the time, you get uh, something that's a weak tie or worse. Whereas with our uh, LSH setup, half of the pairs um, are sort of these strong ties and less than a quarter are uh, weak ties. Um, so in, in practice at YouTube, uh, Grail is uh, part of a, a, a kind of a, a larger, more complex abuse fighting system. Uh, so to try and pull out the particular performance of Grail, uh, we uh, also show this precision recall curve uh, where uh, we're, we do just sort of a single nearest neighbor classifier uh, using the graph itself, where we're using um, the oldest 25% of, uh, of known abusive nodes as seeds. And then we evaluate its uh, prediction performance at uh, predicting the, the newest 75%. And it gives us uh, this uh, precision recall curve. So even with this like very limited setup, we're able to get uh, a pretty substantial amount of the abuse just with this graph that we've learned. Uh, to give you a sense of how this performs in comparison to some other systems that we have deployed there, uh, we also uh, break down the sort of the, the items that are caught by all of these systems uh, uh, by the particular system that caught it. So we have some content classifiers that are catching about half of the items. Uh, we have some other heuristics uh, that find another 5%. Uh, so in total, those two things are finding about 53% of the abuse in this particular setup. Uh, whereas our system using uh, Grail with label propagation is finding uh, about half. So basically by adding Grail and label propagation to the system, uh, we're increasing the recall by about 90%. Um, one other interesting fact about this is that the, um, the, the systems are sort of deployed at different parts in the pipeline. Um, and the, the Grail and label propagation system is actually able to find a lot of uh, older things that uh, some of these other systems were missing. So like three quarters of the stuff that we find uh, with Grail are sort of older. Um, uh, also, to give you kind of a better picture of what this graph looks like, uh, we compute the degree distribution. Uh, we compute it in two different ways. Uh, one is what we call the abusive degree, which is basically for each node, we count how many abusive neighbors it has. Um, and so you can see here that uh, nodes which themselves are marked abusive, uh, they have this degree, abusive degree distribution. So basically, they have uh, they connect uh, pretty readily to other abusive nodes, whereas nodes which are marked safe uh, generally have a much lower uh, abusive degree distribution. And then you can compare this with the overall degree distribution. Uh, and so for the overall degree distribution, uh, interestingly, uh, while you know the, the safe nodes have a higher overall degree distribution than their just their abusive degree distribution, uh, the abusive nodes themselves have a much higher overall degree, uh, which makes uh, some sense since that's sort of what we're targeting with this setup. Um, and then some other like kind of more zoomed in pictures uh, of what uh, the different subgraphs that we find in here look like. 
Um, you can see a bunch of interesting types of structures across this graph. Uh, in some cases, you, you see these very like dense clusters of abuse. Uh, and sometimes you see these kind of more sparse structures, which kind of correspond to non-abuse. Uh, occasionally, we see some like intermixing where you have some like dense cluster that's like mostly abusive and then it has some connections to some other like non-abusive cluster. Uh, and sometimes you can, we can even see these things where we have like uh, small abusive clusters that are sort of loosely connected with each other. Uh, so there's really a whole bunch of different types of behavior uh, that we observe on this graph. So uh, what else can we do besides Grail? Um, well, um, one thing we can do is uh, we have some unsupervised structural similarity measures, uh, like personalized page rank uh, that will be covered in the next section. Um, though there are some kind of more advanced techniques uh, that have been developed more recently, for example, uh, graph embeddings and graph neural network methods, uh, like DeepWalk, and it, which will also be covered later, and uh, Deep Graph InfoMax. Um, another alternative approach to doing similarity is um, uh, other like unsupervised method, method uh, representation learning methods, uh, like uh, variational autoencoders. Um, uh, and then uh, you can also sort of take any of these uh, and use them as uh, inputs to Grail style models, which is a, an interesting uh, trait of these types of things. Uh, and with that, I will uh, uh, finish up my talk. Thank you.